Join me tonight as I do a quick reset on my house and get it ready for morning. We all have things that motivate us. What is it that makes you get up and be motivated to clean? For me, it's doing these videos for one. For two, it's the idea that I get to wake up to a nice clean space and it starts my day without so much busy work. And that I can do things that I enjoy like sitting and having a cup of coffee or coming on here and talking with all of you or planning my next video. Homeschooling Bella, playing with my dogs, cleaning my house, putting it to bed makes tomorrow an easier day. In some ways, I've found a real love for these late night cleaning sessions. I mean, no one likes to clean, but there's something about the house being unbusy and quiet and the mess that you're picking up staying picked up. No little hands touching things or helping, just pure doing what you need to do and getting it done so that you can end your day. I'm pushing the couch back to give our family more room during the day. And yes, I see the stuff under the couch and tomorrow I will clean that up. But for tonight, I'm just pulling the couch out, setting it back so that there's at least about a, maybe a foot more space to the living room. It makes a big difference, believe it or not. Our little grandson comes over and he toddles around the room, so the extra space is very much needed. That's one good thing about there not being a wall behind the couch, that I can adjust the space as we need it. When we first moved here, we actually had the living room very tiny. The couch was pushed very much forward and almost on top of the TV. And as time went on, the couch got further and further back. I love how no matter what I do, Lucky seems completely unfazed. <laughs> he just sits there. I'm tipping and moving the couch and he just sits there without a care in the world. These days cleaning isn't taking me anywhere near as long as it used to. It's nowhere near as intensive. And when I clean during the day, there isn't anywhere near as much to do. Though tomorrow I really do need to get my rug steam cleaned. The one upstairs is getting really bad. One of the cats I think got sick on the rug and it got wiped up, but it still needs to be steam cleaned. It's for some reason, that rug is a light color, and it always just, after a week or so of not being steam cleaned, it just looks a mess. I'm noticing the cat tree is becoming a clutter hot spot. Every time my grandson comes over, everybody rushes to put the stuff that's on the coffee table up onto the cat tree, and then it just starts collecting. I decided tonight to bring my Dyson vacuum downstairs and to bring my shark upstairs. Like I said in another video, I gave most of my sharks away. I, they were getting older, so I kept the newest one and I kept my Dyson and I kept my cordless shark and I have my robot vacuum, so in reality it's more than enough. Apparently Lulu agrees. So, while you're sitting here watching me clean, I figured I'd tell you more about me when I was little. My dad was a commercial lobsterman, and we spent a good many mornings and afternoons out on the boat, and he, he would bring home lobster on the regular. And growing up, I always thought that lobster was something that everybody ate all the time. I never realized that it was an expensive food because 
you know, we were constantly eating it because he was catching it. So, but it's just funny to me how, you know, something that other people look at in a way that it's something special that when I was a kid, it was just like we were eating hamburger. <laughs> I, I remember many, many nights having lobster and corn on the cob and thinking that everybody ate like that, which I lived on <clears throat> Mount Desert Island when I was a kid. And a lot of people on the island were, you know, in the fishing industry and a lot of people ate like that because it was just what was cheap and readily available to them. But when I say cheap, it was free. I mean, they were catching it. They just weren't selling them on that particular day. <clears throat> but I spent a lot of time with my dad when I was a kid, uh, fishing and, you know, going and doing different stuff that he was do doing, repairing traps and, you know, doing stuff with the boat or all kinds of stuff. But my favorite memory is when he worked at a dairy farm and I was a little girl. I must have been really young, maybe three, four years old. And I remember going to the auctions with him and all the little baby cows lined up. And I used to walk along and let all the little baby cows lick my fingers. And I thought it was the greatest thing. So here, I'm just unloading the dishwasher so that I can get it loaded back up real quick and I'll have a few dishes to wash by hand and I will just let them air dry for the night. I don't mind too badly washing the few dishes that are left over because I would have to wash pans and knives anyway. But if there's not too many left over, I really don't mind washing them by hand as long as they get done and it doesn't take me forever. I want to thank all you wonderful ladies that took the time to recommend places for me to look at plus size clothing. I'm going to actually look at all the different places that you guys uh, told me about so that I can see where I can get the best deals and clothes that are going to fit really well because shirts like the one that I have on tonight I really dislike the way they hang down over and you know stick and just I don't like the way that they they fit. I'm sitting here recording this video and Lulu's laying in my arms with her little snores and it's the cutest little doggy snores you ever want to hear. She's very tired and I don't think she can wait to go to bed. She keeps barking at me telling me that it's time to go to bed and I have to keep picking her up and cuddling her and she fell asleep in my arms. And I am out of clean kitchen towels tonight, so I'm gonna make use of the paper towels again. I know, I know, I need to cut it out, but I had to have something to lay the clean dishes down on, so it's gonna have to do. The good thing is I'll only have had clean water on them so I can rip them up and throw them out in my compost bin in the morning. I also did find out that there is a bit of a recycling program in this area. They do cardboard and I believe they do a little bit of certain plastics. But the problem is that I found out is their truck is not working that they pick the recycling up with. And the bins that they have out are overflowing and people are throwing things on the ground, which means that all that recycling is now garbage. So there's no point for me right now to make an extra trip to take it to be recycled when the bins are not even getting emptied and a lot of it is just being turned into direct trash anyway. But I'm gonna keep an eye out on that program when they get back up and <clears throat> running properly so that we can make use of it because it'll cut way down on my trash. 
But as for plain cardboard, most of the time with that, now that my um, composting bin is back up and working, um, <clears throat> me and Trev built a new one, um, we generally rip, you know, plain cardboard up and put it into the composting pile. Speaking of compost, I went out tonight, I had a bag of potatoes that were sprouting eyes and, and roots and they looked like aliens. And I took them outside and where my old compost was, I planted them and just figured I'd throw them in the ground and see what happens. So might get some new potatoes out of it or they might just brought back into the ground either way. They didn't go into the trash, so... It'll be interesting to see what happens. It may be a little late in the season to plant anything, but I figured why not give it a whirl instead of just tossing them in the trash. And I figured where it was being planted in composting type um, soil that they would grow a little bit faster anyway due to the denser nutrients. I also noticed when I was looking at my seed packets that a lot of my seeds um, are not dated very far ahead so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going out tomorrow with the kids if we can get a period of no rain or thunderstorms and I am simply gonna weed up where the garden was last year and simply tell them to put anything and everything into the ground and just let it grow and see what pops up I mean it may just be a terrible idea but it isn't any worse than the seeds just sitting becoming so that they won't grow at all periods so in fact i think some of them are from previous years and they may actually already be expired but we're going to see if they'll grow and i'll keep you updated on that i know a lot of you have mentioned fly lady to me and i am familiar with fly lady and her clean sink and get dressed to the shoes and you know a lot of her stuff that she did back years ago. I haven't been following her as of recent and back when I was, you know, keeping up with that, there were a lot of emails and stuff that went out and it was sort of hard to keep up with for a lot of people and I was one of those people. But I always have loved her shine the sink, you know, thing of keeping your sink clean and free and clear because to me that is like the epicenter of a clean kitchen. If your sink is clean, it makes the whole thing look so much better. I just absolutely love a clean sink. And if it wasn't so late at night, I probably would have spent even more time scrubbing it and making it shine. I love it when it's shiny and pretty. I remember when we moved in here, it was so dull and terrible looking from years of abuse. And I'm going to tell you, I scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed it. And it came out looking so nice and I was so proud of myself and the sink just absolutely looked beautiful compared to how it looked when we moved in. I will tell you when I put the new contact paper down on the counter, I am going to have Trev helped me lift the sink up and we are going to silicone underneath the sink so I don't have the white uh, around the edge of the sink to keep the water out from underneath it. Eventually my whole countertop really does need replacing so I'm just going to cover it probably one last time and then we'll work on getting the new countertop and what I would like to do <clears throat> is um, continue my counters over and around to where my pantry shelf is and up the wall and across the wall that's on the back wall and move some things around and at that point I may consider putting in a full-size dishwasher that's built in. I really am glad to have my coffee bar back. I look forward to decorating it for the different holidays and stuff that will be coming up. I really enjoyed that when I did the Christmas coffee bar last year and I will be super happy to do it again this year. 
and I ran some plain water through my Kerrig and got whatever grinds were in it out. Now, I thought here that I was going to fold a bunch of laundry and get some new laundry running, but, surprise, there was already laundry sitting in the machine and it needed to be rewashed. So, I'm going to dry that tonight and there should be plenty of laundry to fold tomorrow. But, another thing is, is you guys all have very mixed reviews on the curtains and after doing some laundry tonight, I kind of have mixed reviews myself because it's, they're not sliding very easily and that means that they're sort of in the way when you're doing stuff. So I'm going to look into finding a way to either make them slide easier or maybe try a valence. And I got an idea when I was reading somebody's um, comment to me today that I should you know, sew a valence, and I got thinking that when I did all my kitchen curtains, um, I ended up not using the lower half of the set. So I have a lot of material that I can use to make a valence to go up over the machine that would match my existing curtains. And I'm probably going to try that and see if it looks any better or functions better for me. And then we will all have a poll and you guys can tell me what you think looks best because to be honest with you I will probably have a hard time on my own choosing so anyway I'm gonna get this garbage taken out and the floor swept up and hopefully not run into the trash panda because he was out there the other night he tipped over all my trash cans and I went out there and he realized that there was no food in the trash can so he took off running and I told him not to come back and I don't think he listened because he came back and tipped him over 10 minutes later just to be a pain in the butt. <laughs> but that does remind me of a cute little story. Early in our marriage, and I think I only had Chelsea and Justin back then, um, we lived in an apartment complex and we noticed that every night everybody went out onto their back porches and were doing something. So we went out to see what they were doing. And they were feeding a family of skunks. And we were completely freaked out. Like, what are you guys doing? You're going to get sprayed and, you know, just whatever. And come to find out, these skunks were so friendly with everybody in the complex that they would just come right up, eat out of your hand, and then be on their merry way. And you wouldn't even know that they were even around because they were not letting any scent off in the area. They didn't get into trash. They literally just came through. Everybody fed them and they just went home. And it was the cutest little thing ever. I mean, not that I'm a huge skunk fan, but, you know, they were adorable in, in their own little skunky way. Anyway, we're at the end of another video. And I want to thank you for being here. And as always, happy cleaning. Bye-bye.